Hi, I'm Bill Blake with the American Lamb Council. I am a marketing director with them in the Great Lakes area. And about a year ago, we uh, got a request from our producers to do a video that they could use to take into their processors that process their lambs to do some more things with this carcass for added value. Maybe there's more things we can do with this carcass so that our customers would be satisfied. So what we want to do is to take you beyond basics and show you some other additional things that can be done with this carcass that will sell more meat, which will benefit the processor and the grower. The first thing we're gonna do is take this whole lamb carcass, and the first thing we're gonna do is remove the neck portion of the carcass. And you can see that this is nice and lean, and it has some value to it. And we're just gonna set this aside for now and get back to that in a second. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move the lower trotter bones off this leg of lamb. And I know that this is a lamb because this front trotter bones is telling me that it is. Fresh American lamb goes to market anywhere from five to seven months of age. The younger the animal, the sharper the points, the redder the color. As the animal matures into the yearling stage or the mutton stage, these points disappear and they turn into what we call roller skates or spool joints. <coughs> Next thing we're gonna do is just remove the front lamb shank. And this is one of the biggest items in businessman's lunches today. And if we could start raising all of our lambs with six front shanks to them instead of two, we'd have funny looking lambs, but we sure would do a service to the industry as far as solving some industry problems. take off the mate to that one. We just cut them right above the knuckle on that first cut. Next thing we're gonna do is just turn this lamb back upright again. And with the tip of our knife, we're gonna feel down here beyond the sirloin or the pin bone that separates the loin from the legs. And we're just going to take the legs and separate them from the loin portion of the lamb. This is a beautiful lamb carcass. And we're going to set that aside. And now that we got this on its back, we're gonna count down five ribs from the shoulder. And the reason why we do that is we want to standardize the industry with eight rib racks as opposed to eight and nine. Works on one side but doesn't work on the other. And now we've got the lamb broken down. And the next thing we want to do is just start on the leg, because we'll get these shoulders, or the middle meat out of the way in the shoulders. Now I'm just gonna cut these tendons from the, separate the legs, and we're gonna cut those short, just hand cut them. Next, we're going to split the legs from doubles to singles. And there we have two legs. Now, what we've got here is showing you the crosscut chuck. It's got the brisket points on it, and we'll split that into subprimals. This, we've got the middle meat, or the bracelet, or the lamb back depending on what part of the country you come from, contains the lamb breast on both sides, the racks and the loin chops, and then we split the legs in half, the neck slices, and two front lamb shanks, which constitutes the carcass. What we're gonna do now is just set these off to the side 
and get into the actual cutting of the consumer cuts. And what we want to do right now is one of the problems in the industry is that um, people process legs of lamb and they think that that's the only way it should be presented <clears throat> or else they'll take it and they'll cut this in half and make two roasts out of it. The person getting this portion benefits. The person with getting this portion doesn't get the value because there's more bone and fat and waste in there than actually meat. So what we want to do is show you some new things on lamb <coughs> that add um, some value added cuts to the product and this first leg of lamb I'm going to try to cut this not try but we're going to cut it into seven different varieties of meals and the first thing we're going to do is cut three nice thick sirloin steaks here and we cut these just a little bit thick so that the these can be broiled either indoors or out. Real nice lamb. Just going to trim off that tailbone there and get rid of that. Take these little trimmings. We're going to set those aside for our ground lamb. Just set this aside, and we're going to just cut through our cuts. This is a gorgeous lamb. It's got nice color to it, nice texture to it. Going to eat very, very nice. What we're going to do is get rid of the internal fat here out of the cavity and make these almost into real nice semi-boneless -bone chops. We do a lot of studies to find out what the consumer wants today. And our studies show us that the consumer is willing to pay a little bit more money for product, providing they can eat all that they could buy. No longer want bone and waste and fat, things that they can't consume. So we'll trim these down to about an eighth of an inch outside fat. And because we're going to broil these chops, get rid of the parchment skin covering on the lamb known as the fell and put these into real nice thick chops. And meal number one out of our seven way leg, as I said, is three nice thick sirloin chops that can be broiled either indoors and out. Next thing we're going to do is just turn the leg of lamb, put our knife next to the end of the lower shank bone and bring it down so that you can feel this joint here. A lot of people say they like to go out with me because I know where all the joints are. That's not true. What we're going to do is save these bones for a scotch barley broth soup. We're going to pull out this lower shank portion and because this has little tendons in it and little, little fat to it, not much, we're going to cut this into a nice Irish lamb stew for our cold winter days. And lamb makes excellent lamb or stew. Meal number two. Next thing I'm going to do is just totally bone out this leg. Simple procedure. Just the hard part is finding the connecting tissue between the center leg bone and the socket in the H bone. And there, that just separates out nice. Again, I'm just going to put the tip of my knife next to the center leg bone here. That'll tell the knife pretty much where to go. Just follow that, bo that bone right down and just Just keep peeling around there, working it out. I tell anybody if they can cut up a chicken, which that's easy to do, they can cut up a lamb carcass or a side of beef. It's just a matter of knowing the muscles and where to put your knife. Now I'm just going to separate the top round from the sirloin knuckle portion and the bottom round. And this is an excellent way to cook lamb is to take a leg of lamb like this and marinate it 
in a nice wine or a dry rub of maybe simple salt and pepper, lemon pepper, garlic, whatever you like, and <laughs> marinate this overnight. Build a nice fire out in the yard on your Weber kettle or any grill that you have, and put this on the grill in about 40 minutes. You can satisfy everybody's taste buds because lamb can be eaten blush pink like beef, and it can be eaten medium and never well done because cooking any meat to a well done state only dries it out and that toughens it. But that's an excellent meal if you're entertaining where you want to feed a lot of people, you can do that. What we're going to do next is just take off the top round muscle for the rest of our seven way meal. Just going to peel away this little cord here and this cut here makes real nice, excellent fillets or these could be cut paper thin and uh, maybe pan fried, put into a nice onion roll and washed down with a cold bottle of beer on a hot summer day. But there are four nice lamb cutlets and that's still part of our seven way meal. Next what I'd like to do is introduce us to a dish that our Greek friends introduced us to is lamb shish kebabs. These are just excellent. Any time is to take cubes of lamb like this and put them on a wooden skewer or even a metal skewer and um, intertwine them with some green peppers and onions and sliced onions, cherry tomatoes, topped off with a real nice big mushroom cap and just marinated and grilled. This is the sirloin tip that could be used as an ideal small roast for the small family. It's all solid meat, but what we're going to do is we're going to add to our kebab cubes with this and our stews. And the next thing we're going to make out of this is you can see that this lamb has taken on an international flavor. We've got an Irish lamb stew, we've got Greek kebabs. Mexican cooking right now is very, very popular. So we'll use lamb and dice this up real small. This can be cooked in special spices and seasonings and put into flour tortillas and served as burritos. Do anything with lamb that you do with beef, pork, or poultry. And you can see that these meals are not skimpy. They've got some value. Those chops will feed a family of three. Those cutlets will feed a family of three. The Irish stew is excellent with vegetables and gravies. The, um, the lamb kebabs are just excellent. And we still got meat left over here. We're going to pull out the lower shank portion again, and this has got just a little tissue running through it, which is, when cooked down, is going to add flavor to any soup or stew that you make. Just one of my favorite meals. See how nice and lean that is? Just gorgeous. Next thing I'm going to do is pull out the eye roll tender, or the eye roll, out of the leg of lamb. And as you can see, in relation to an eye roll of beef, it's kind of small. I like these cooked on the grill. It's a juicy, succulent piece of meat. But you can see there's very little marbling in lamb, and it's not necessary. That uh, lamb, if you're ever sick on special diets, lamb would be cycled more on your diet than beef and pork. Uh, very seldom pork because of the nutrient values of lamb. Very little internal fat to it, and the external fat can be done away with by simply moving it with, an, uh, with a spoon or a knife, fork, just excellent. <coughs> Mentioned Mexican food before. One of the fastest growing restaurants, not fastest growing, they've been here a long time, is oriental type restaurants and lamb fits well in oriental type restaurants as well as any other type of, of restaurant. And people today are trying new things. One of the best things that ever happened to the lamb business is the Greek gyros or gyros. 
Almost every college in town has sells gyros, and the young people today know what those are. And um, gyros are made with 45% lamb and 55% beef, so the students and other people have an opportunity to get introduced to lamb that way. But in oriental type restaurants, what we're going to make right now is some things that can be used in wok type cooking. And you all know what woks are. They're little things you throw at wabbits. But what we're going to do is make some stir fry strips or pepper steaks and things that can be used along those lines. Just take these and put them in a, a, a deep container and cook them and add vegetables and make a nice sauce gravy to them. Sit down, pour the wine, light the candles, and totally enjoy. So there we have it. We said we were going to try to get seven meals out of this leg of lamb. We got three nice sirloin chops, semi-boneless that can be broiled either indoors or out. We've got these nice boneless top fillets. We could also cut those paper thin. They could be pan fried and just in a roll. We got our lamb kebabs for an excellent outdoor grilling. Our lamb stew for a cold Irish, or not Irish lamb stew for a cold day. We got our burrito meat and our stir fry strips, and we saved all the bones and waste for a scotch barley broth soup. Uh, seven meals out of one leg of lamb, and this will sell more meat than just that big bony piece of meat or a half a leg of lamb that really the consumer doesn't want. This is the, the bracelet, as known in the New York market, or a lamb middle or a lamb back, depending on what part of the country you come from and probably the most recognizable cuts by almost anybody in the industry. You've got your lamb ribs, which people look at as a rack of lamb, and they know a crown roast if they're entertaining it at holiday time, and you also got the lamb loin, and everybody knows what that is. But uh, before we start, I left it whole for this reason, is that it has some other portions of meat on it that has some value, which is the lamb breast. And first we're gonna remove these, and we're going to do what the industry doesn't do. We're going to move them and make them a little bit wider so we shorten up the ribs. And I'm going to cut this just above the blade portion there and down along the loin because these lamb breasts, for years, people just looked at it as a piece of bone and fat and waste. but it does have some value, and we're just going to set that off to the side, and then we're going to do the same thing with the other ones. Remove both of those, and hopefully we get them somewhat even. Because it does, as I say, have some value. That meat there Nobody wanted to spend any time with it. Consequently, wound up costing a dollar fifty cents a pound. Went in the bone barrel and got the processor selling it to the the bone man. Only got a half a cent a pound for it. So that turned them off on lamb. And consequently, because there was no value to it, it raised the prices on the other cuts. But now, utilizing all these cuts. We can reduce the prices on the value-added cuts because we can get more dollar return out of that. This first loin here, what we're going to do is we're going to split this in half. And this is kind of difficult to do with a handsaw. And they said it couldn't be done. It's marvelous what you can do with a handsaw that's bought at a flea market. And the first thing we're going to do is make these real nice short-tailed. And we're going to save those trimmings for our ground lamb. <laughs> make sure the spinal cord is removed because that has no value. And what we're going to do now is remove the outside fell it's kind of interesting, this protective cover on lamb. If you're roasting a leg of lamb, you leave the fell on because it seals juices. But anything that you're going to broil, remove the fell. 
And now we're going to slice these and make these into a, about one inch. And I know you as a processor are not going to do the things that I'm doing by hand. <laughs> you want a power cut and that's fine. But the most cuts that you can make by hand and then run through your power saw will leave nice clean facings and not get a lot of bone meal on the meat. Which means less wiping, less discoloration, less bacteria. And we'll cut that on the power saw. but I'm sure that every customer that you process a lamb for, if they sell lamb chops cut like them, they're going to have more satisfied customers and you will do more business. And let's just make another package of loin chops here. But out of one carcass now, we've got 10 real nice thick chops and I'll do something with those separately. Again, as I say, in a presentation like this, this spells value and more satisfied customers in slicing chops that way. The next thing is that we made these thick, but I'm going to take these and make them into two nice boneless cutlets, removing that top fat. And there's two options just out of one loin. This is another trimmed lamb loin. <clears throat> and what we want to do is just show you some other opportunities in merchandising lamb loins. And I think that the customer today can relate to this. It's a piece of meat that she's familiar with and can buy. And we can take it beyond basics where it just doesn't have to be loin lamb chops, that there's other things that can really add value and make people want to buy more lamb. And the first thing I'm going to do is make something that uh, is not cheap, but again, too, there's a market for is lamb tenderloins. We do it in beef and pork and veal. We do it in turkeys. We do it in every segment of the industry. Why not do it in lamb? And some of your upscale customers are looking for things like this and another way of just merchandising lamb loins. You can take the tails off of this, and again, too, there's value there. We'll get to that just a little bit later. Remove the tails at the eyes. Next thing we're going to do is just take our knife and put it <coughs> next to the <coughs> rib or the uh, T-bone portion of this, and we're going to totally bone out this lamb loin roll or lamb loin section. And you got to be real careful not to break the back skin on this because what we're going to make right now is some double boneless loin lamb chops. This is not difficult to do. And again, you as meat men and processors know the conformation of the animal and how this works. It's just like boning out a loin of beef and you do the same thing. Again, I'm just trying to be careful here not to break the, the back skin so we can keep this intact. 
and there we've separated the bone out of there. Again, I just want to take this right above the eye, so we're going to remove this little bit of lean. And those are excellent trimmings. They're going to make real good ground lamb. My job gives me the opportunity to travel around the country and pick up a lot of ideas on different ways of merchandising. Just want to trim this over and take this down to about an eighth of an inch outside fat. And in my travels, I ran across a supermarket chain in St. Louis, Missouri called Schnucks, a big chain in St. Louis. And they did an excellent job of merchandising this cut that I'm going to show you is double boneless loin lamb chops. Cut knees about an inch thick. Knees would be just excellent broiled. And this is an addition to what single loin chops is another opportunity as double boneless loin chops and again we can further merchandise by maybe cutting these into strips and having boneless lamb loins that can be broiled or individual little cutlets one side but in addition to loin lamb chops we now have double boneless loin lamb chops. So there's another option in bone and out loins is lamb tenderloins and boneless loin lamb chops and this will get you a lot of repeat sales. This is part of that bracelet we talked about earlier. It's the, the um, lamb ribs, the lamb racks. When I broke the lamb down, we cut into the shoulder at five ribs, so we made a nice eight rib rack. Um, this is one of the biggest items on restaurant menus across the country, is that when people dine out, racks of lamb for two on the menu is a big item. I mentioned braised lamb shanks at luncheon time, this is the big dinner item in most restaurants. Biggest problem is that the consumer can't um, buy this piece of meat at a retail store, so here's opportunities for a producer and again in a packer to make this, the way it is sold in the restaurant, that the buyer of these here whole lambs cut and wrapped for their freezer can relate to this thing and invariably they would want a rack of lamb for two. What I've done is this comes like this, I just split this in half now. We've got two portions. And what we're going to do first is just remove what we call the buttons off the bottom of the rack. And again, make sure we get this back strap out of there because this, our research, our research we tried to find out if this had any value. And our findings were that the longer you chew that, the tougher it gets. I've already taken out the blade bone. And what we want to do is start on the blade end, and we're going to cut this down. And because the chine is off, we can make some real nice, ideal-looking rib chops here.